Hallelujah. That's it. Let's just lift our hands and thank the Lord. Praise him for his goodness. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why don't we try a little high praise out of gratitude for what he's done. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. You can be seated. Amen. But from time to time in the scriptures, you will read accounts of um, all things that happen that could um, dramatically turn uh, events around. There's just no question about it. God has that kind of an effect on our lives. And every time we come into his presence, there's an opportunity for that to happen for literally God to do something in our lives that becomes a, um, you know, a life changer. Things just shift, and, and all of a sudden things begin to make sense in the spiritual realm and, and so on and so forth. And, I, and I, I sense that kind of thing in this place tonight, praise God, where there's a dramatic life-changing shift that can happen to um, individuals here in Jesus' name. One time in particular in the scripture that it happened, that it kind of had an opposite effect, but it, it actually ended up <clears throat> having a more positive effect. And that was in the time when King Saul was, was the king and when his um, kingdom fell, I'm talking about his personal kingdom fell, um, the Philistines were able to overcome him. And um, when the hand of God is not on the situation, things like that can, they can happen. Well, the thing that, that was taken from them at that point in time in the history of, of Israel was the Ark of the Covenant. And, of course, we understand in the Old Testament, and maybe you don't, but in the Old Testament, the Ark of the Covenant represented the presence of God. That's what represented the presence of God, wherever that Ark of the Covenant was. That's why the nation of Israel was, was, um, was instructed very, very meticulously in how to handle that and, and how to care for it and so on and so forth. Moses, in his drawing, or, or I should say interpreting, of the blueprints of the tabernacle plan, was very quick to instruct that the tabernacle was a very special thing, the Ark of the Covenant, rather. And, of course, it was instructed in such a way um, for it to be, um, uh, to be handled. But the, the, the presence of the Lord doesn't always have the same effect on some people as it has on another. And in the case of the, um, of the Philistines or, or the, those people, that um, uh, the presence of the Lord began to, began to bring a negative effect. And, you know, there's wise people all over the world, people that can begin to see things, whether they want to live for God or not, they can still be wise. And there were wise men in, in this situation that recognized that uh, God is doing something here, and, and it's definitely not fitting into what we're doing. And so what they were instructed to do was to take the Ark of the Covenant, and they put it in a special way, and, and this was kind of a test. I won't go into the, in, in the entire test, but they sent away the Ark of the Covenant into the land of, of Israel and they put a trespass offering in there and and so on and so forth and so when King David finally got to a place where where um, he he was in power he wanted to bring that Ark of the Covenant back into the city because he knew what it represented and the presence of God should represent something fantastic and powerful it really should but that first trial run wasn't so good was it I don't know if those of you remember the story he put it on a cart you know which was probably the faddish thing to do you know, that's what the Philistines did when they sent it away. And, and he might have thought, well, this is a new way. But you must understand, some things of God, he doesn't want them new. He just wants them to be continued on the way they are. And when they got near the city or, or near the place there, uh, the Ark of the Covenant was jiggling. And, and Uzziah, I believe was the guy's name, was the priest. And he went to steady that. And, of course, he was struck down dead. And um, that, that sent a ripple through the nation of Israel um, like never before, and of course that cart was not allowed to go into the city. David was afraid. Amen, and I've seen that effect on people's lives, even in this day and age. Praise God, you've got to be careful. Sometimes God has a way of warning and helping us to understand that maybe some things could be handled not right. 
Well, the Bible says that that cart and that Ark of the Covenant went to a place called Obed-Edom, I believe is the guy's name, and he made it and he put it in his house. And for about 90 days, the, the Ark was there, and the blessings of the Lord began to fall in that home. And I mean, it made quite a difference, a life-changing. I, I believe that house of Obed-Edom probably was never the same again because of the presence of the Lord. And, 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 and realistically, folks, that's the way it's supposed to be. I know there are things that sometimes we don't do right and God has to correct us and he has to bring things into our lives. But make no mistake about it, praise God, his presence is supposed to be a joyful thing. It's supposed to be something that we just can't wait to get more of in Jesus' name. And so hopefully there's some people here tonight that you will recognize that because David recognized that. And he corrected his, the error of his way, and um, he was able to handle that ark the way God wanted him to handle it. And the ark of the covenant was brought back into the city, praise God. And I believe it made an effect in Jesus' name. I believe one of the things that God is doing this very year in our movement, I, in our culture, is I see the Lord beginning to do many healings. And not just physical healings. I see things being... Um, uh, being able to be ministered to in the spirit where God can make some shifts in, in Jesus' name. I, I felt something like that in our prayer room tonight, praise God, that there were some things that were happening there. And I can't always put my finger on it. I just have to depend on the Lord showing me. And that's what leads me into the subject tonight that I want to present to you for a few minutes tonight. And that is um, on the idea of healing, praise God. And, and I'm hoping that through the help of the Lord, I'll be able to identify some things here that maybe are happening to you. Um, we, uh, I've been um, advertising this now for several months. Um, our Pentecostal Herald is coming out now on a monthly basis and it has some incredible um, articles in it. You've heard me say that before. And it's not just people who are licensed ministers and um, uh, people that pastor churches and evangelize and have positions in the church that are writing these articles. There are people from all different walks of life that are, that are um, um, uh, that, are, that are writing these articles and just have tremendously done something for me. It's affected me. My faith level in healing has risen. It really has. And I believe, like again tonight, I believe there's people in here that God wants to heal you. Praise God. And um, I'd like to see that happen. I really would. I've learned to be patient, though. I've learned to, to, to understand the presence of the Lord is 24-7. It's going to go with you. Praise God. I'm telling you, Jerry, this is going to be a week that is going to be different than any other week in your entire life. I'm telling you that right now because of the presence of God. Hallelujah. I mean to tell you, it's going to be different for him. And God is already, I think, has already begun to illumine your eyes, and there's things that you're going to be able to do in Jesus' name. And, and I, like we shared this morning, you know, God is no respecter of persons. He is, and he loves everybody. Anybody that will come to him in fear, in reverence, and honor him that way, and then determine within your heart, and, that, and repentance is a big help for that. Repentance will help you to determine in your heart to do right. See, David had to repent. He didn't do it right, and it cost a man his life. I don't know how I'd feel about that. I don't know how, da how David had dealt with that. It must have been a different time, that type of thing. But it was a costly mistake. But the beautiful thing is, is he could repent. He could turn around. He could do it differently. And he did. And an entire city and an area was affected, praise God, by that. You don't know, saint of God, who and how many people are going to be affected by that shift in your life. Those so-called stubborn people that wouldn't listen to you, give you the time of day. If you would just make a slight shift in your living and repent and be willing to change and to live the way God wants you to change, I'm telling you the doors that that will open are phenomenal. They are. And God wants to do that. Can you just lift your hands right now? I feel like somebody needs to let that just marinate a little bit. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Mm. Your presence, Lord. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Your presence, Lord Jesus, makes all the difference in the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. 
Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. First of all, tonight, I would like to read you one of the articles out of the Pentecostal Herald because I think it could be very helpful for somebody. And the, and the title of this is A Biblical View of Healing. Not just a worldly view, but a biblical view of healing. Listen to this. This might be a little bit tedious for you, but I think there are some words of encouragement here. To understand the biblical view of healing, one has to understand God's purpose in creating humanity, which was relationship. Somebody say relationship. Amen. He desired a relationship with mankind that would primarily draw man to be a worshiper of him. Secondarily, man would help to draw others into a relationship of worship towards God. See what's happening? Anybody got a bigger vision right now? Hallelujah. Amen. To facilitate such a relationship, God placed Adam and Eve in a perfect place, the Garden of Eden. They enjoyed a life without stress, worries, or pressures. Wouldn't that be nice? I don't blame you for wanting to go to the Garden of Eden. I'd like to go there myself, but it ain't going to happen, praise God. A life of perfect health, that's what they had in that garden. The command not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil had consequences if disobeyed. And in the day that they ate of that tree, they would die. With their disobedience, death entered into the life of man. This would not be an instantaneous death, rather it would begin the decline. Now you can understand some of the challenges that you have. It would begin the decline. They began to age. They began to decrease in their physical strength. That's what it was. Okay? Towards the day of their eventual passing. 950 years it took for Adam to die. Quite a deal, wasn't it? You know? In addition, an emotional, now listen to this, an emotional and spiritual death would occur. Sin would cause them to lose the spiritual harmony with God that they had previously enjoyed. Being out of a right relationship with God would also bring emotional unrest to their lives. I sense that with people that I deal with on a daily basis. There's an unrest there. There's an uneasiness. And God wants to bring it back to a harmony, praise God. No, you're not going to live forever when God saves you, but you can begin to knit together with the spirit and the soul, and it makes all the difference in the world. It may have been far easier for God simply to allow the first man and woman to pass from this life, considering that his desire for relationship with man would never be fulfilled. But instead, he began the process of physical emotional and spiritual healing in the life of mankind. Now we're talking about from a biblical standpoint. While modern medicine or medical science has done much to advance physical healing and Christian counselors can be of great benefit with emotional healing, God is the only one who can bring complete healing to the individual's body soul, and spirit. Oh, hallelujah. God is the only one that can do that. Amen. Boy, does that narrow it down, doesn't it? Now, most of the focus in discussing healing dwells on the aspect of physical healing. That's the one we pay most attention to. And if that one doesn't happen, we don't think anything really is going on. And that is not true. James 5 and 14 clearly tells us what to do when we are sick in our bodies. It tells us, is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. In a medical world that is becoming more and more complex, God only requires us to return to this simplicity of asking in faith. Now, are you getting it from a biblical standpoint? Ask and you shall receive. That's why I'm hesitant about going to people sometimes when the God says, no, they need to initiate this in Jesus' name. His command, he commanded his people in Leviticus 11 and 44, for I am the Lord your God. 
Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and, be, and ye shall be holy, for I am holy. Holiness denotes wholeness. In other words, to be holy is to be whole and complete in him. That's what he's doing, praise God. This means that true healing goes much deeper than physical healing alone. The deeper issues of healing are those of emotions and, and spirit of a person. These areas are not as visible as those around us. Medical science and prescriptions do not have, now listen to this, they don't have the ability the spirit has to affect the healing of the mind and the heart of a person. I'm not saying they're not trying. I'm not saying that they don't have good intentions. But do you understand the impossible task that they have before them? Only God can bring these things. And anything else is just a false rendition of it. That's why people sometimes that use those sources just go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. No, I'm not putting down. I am just nearly pointing out tonight that there's an opportunity here tonight for that to happen. God does not leave us without a resource for healing the entire person. I didn't say he'd keep back the aging process. I said he would heal your body. He can and will heal your mind. And he will heal your spirit. That has already begun in you, my friend. Hallelujah. Can you handle some more? Let me read that. This is just fantastic. Now, we're talking about understanding the biblical view of healing. So much time she needs to be spent in this explanation because sometimes we just, we just want to do something and we need to make sure that it's from the Lord. Now, the Bible says in Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, it says, surely he hath borne our griefs. He. Who is that he? Jesus is that he. And carried our sorrows. That's Jesus. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. I'm talking about what the Lord does. This is complete and total healing for all things present. No, um, let me back up. Past, present, and future. He was wounded for our transgressions. Wounds are outwardly visible. You can see when somebody is physically hurt. You can tell that. That's why we do pursue that. I don't think it's a wrong pursuit. But sometimes there's something on the inside that keeps that from becoming complete. And God wants to go into that area. There's cuts and scrapes and tears and, and flesh that bleeds outwardly. We know that when that happens. Jesus was wounded, and the blood flowing from his body fell on the ground for our transgressions. The blood came from open wounds to heal our, you know, evident open afflictions and hurts. God did that for us. But he was also bruised for our iniquity. Bruising occurs beneath the skin's surface. Oh, man, I feel the Holy Ghost right now in the name of Jesus. These are wounds that damage a person deep within. This spiritual bruising is inflicted in the inner man. Not everyone can see the bruises or know how deep they really are. People cover them up and hide them, hoping no one will ever notice. They are the wounds that create the turmoil of mixed emotions, anger, and bitterness that occur deep within a person. But it is those deep, hidden wounds that Jesus Christ died to heal. He was bruised for those hurts that no one but you and God see. Oh, how I keep, I hate keeping, no, I don't hate, I, I just got to use him. I felt that. I felt that this morning when I laid hands on you. I felt the Holy Ghost wallowing up inside of you, but I felt healing coming in, praise God, in things. And you felt that too, didn't you? I'm telling you something. There's nothing like that. Why don't you and I just rejoice in that right now? Can we do that? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, that's real. 
That's real. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, incidentally, you interpret to her, God wants to do the same thing for her. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. Where was I? Okay, in Jeremiah 8 and 22, God asked two... I'm just about done with the reading here. And in Jeremiah 8, 22, God asked two pointed questions. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Both of these are rhetorical questions. God knew that he had provided physicians among his people. He also as well was well aware that there was indeed balm in Gilead. Listen to this. Listen to this. This balm was precious and valuable. Its name came from a Hebrew word meaning Lord of Oil. It came from a tree that was approximately 14 feet in height and 9 inches in diameter. It dripped this balm from incisions made into its bark. The amazing thing was that it dripped only 4 or 5 drops a day. It was so scarce that the gardens produced only about 7 gallons a year, making it worth twice its weight in silver. Its uh, medicinal properties were incredibly inf effective. With such a valuable balm available, God wanted to know why healing was not taking place in Israel. The God that created man also created the means of healing for man. The precious blood. Come on. The precious blood blood of Jesus Christ. I'm talking about healing. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was broken for our healings, folks. Come on, I'm talking about the blood of Jesus Christ. The precious blood of Christ brought complete healing and deliverance to humanity. With such a powerful research of a resource available to his people. Come on, I'm not talking about Jeremiah 8 and 22 anymore. I'm talking about the blood of Jesus Christ that is available to every person in this place right now for the asking. For the asking. That's right, you don't have to wait for another altar call. You can stand up and say, God, I need your healing power right now in my mind, in my heart, in my soul. That's right. I'm telling you something right now. That balm, that, that healing ointment is far, far more precious than any tree could produce. Come on, the blood, we're looking at healing from a biblical standpoint. And if God gave healing from a tree in the Old Testament, he gave healing from a tree in the New Testament. It's called the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ. And his blood still does the work. Come on, all you got to do is claim it. All you got to do is say, yes, Lord, you're my healing. You are my healing in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Come on, let's go about another 15 seconds. Come on, open up your minds and your hearts right now. Let the precious blood of Jesus Christ roll over you right now. Come on, I'm telling you, it's able. Where's the blood? It's in his name. When you call upon his name, I'm telling you right now, the blood comes. I'm talking about the healing power of Jesus Christ. Come on, so there's emotional healing in this place right now. There's a shift that's going to take place with somebody that's going to affect your entire neighborhood. It's going to affect your work area. Come on, it's something that's going to take place deep inside of you right now by the blood of Jesus Christ. Come on, the blood of Jesus Christ is able. He's able to do exceeding abundant. Oh my goodness, in the name of Jesus, it's happening. It's happening over here again in the name. That's it, that's it. And she, I know there's a 
language barrier here, but there's not a spiritual barrier here in the name of Jesus. I'll tell you what, Je uh, Jerry, lay your hands right here, right on the top of her head. You pray the prayer of faith right now in Jesus' name. That's it. That's it. In the name, oh, the blood is flowing, folks. It's flowing in this place right now. It's flowing. Oh, yes. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. That's it, that's it. The blood of Jesus Christ. That's right, he died for you. He died for me. His blood is, is all we need, praise God. Oh, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, you're doing great. I, I, I sense the flow of the Spirit of God is in this place in a special way. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Mm, I come against that shame right now. I come against that shame in the name of Jesus. I command it to lift right now in Jesus' name. Praise God. I come against that past that is keeping the, the present from happening in the name of Jesus. That's it, the blood of Jesus Christ. It wipes all of that away. It gives us a new slate in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, that's right. That's what's available for you. That's what's available for me. Come on, this is what God died for us for. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. That's it, that's it, that's it. I'm telling you right now, there's healing. There is balm. There is the blood in the name of Jesus, and it's in this place right now. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, there's nothing like a new convert to, to remind us of that again, isn't there? There's nothing like a new convert to help us to understand what it's all about in Jesus' name. That the newness of life, praise God. If any person be in Christ, they're a new creature in Jesus' name. Oh, I'm telling you, folks, this is how, this is how it works in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Let's give him some praise. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. You may be seated, praise God. I'll, I'll finish up here real quickly. Obviously, physical healing was never intended to allow man to live forever. That, that's just been proven over and over and over again. God didn't, you know, he loves us so much, praise God, that he's not going to keep us in this state. And that's why death will come. That's why you and I ultimately should not be afraid of it. We should not fear it. We shouldn't just get overwhelmed with the idea that we want to stay, you know, I, and I, I know I could be very, very misunderstood right now. I'm not advocating that we kill ourselves and that we prematurely die. But listen to me, folks. There's nothing scary about death when it comes to the Lord. I'm telling you, that's the thing he wants to take away. Praise God. The peace of God that can come on a person as they leave this life is one of the greatest, not only blessings, but one of the greatest testimonies that there is in Jesus' name. And so obviously the physical healings that he brings into our lives are not meant to make us live forever in this state. It may not always be God's will to heal a person too. That's another one of those considerations that we have to consider, that God, no matter what, I'm going to live for you. But scripture indicates it is always, now listen to me, folks. It's always, now we're talking about healing from a biblical perspective. God might not always heal the person, but it is always his will for us to ask him, to pray to him in Jesus' name. At some point, the human body will no longer be healed and we will pass from this life unless we are translated by the catching away of the bride of Christ. However, at the resurrection of the dead, let me remind you, the redeemed individual will then experience complete and total healing of the body. I told our discipleship class again today, I reminded them of this. Justification is what God does with your past. Sanctification is the process and the work he's doing right now in your present. And then one of these days, we are going to be glorified. There's going to be a glorified body that he's going to give to us. 
There's going to be a resurrection, my friends, in the name of Jesus like none else. In Jesus' name. And so we have quite a future that we've got to look forward to in Jesus' name. And so at that resurrection, that will happen. Revelation 21 and 4 tells us, listen to this, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Hopefully somebody tonight... And these, there's some magazines out there in the for you. You can take these. This whole edition here is on the idea of healing. I believe what our general superintendent preached in October is a mandate that God gave to the apostolic movement. He said we need to see those signs following. Praise God. I believe God wants to bring some healing in the name of Jesus. Let me direct one area here tonight that I feel strongly that God wants to do here in this place here tonight. And it may have already happened. I don't know. It doesn't matter to me. But trust is an important issue. And I hope that you are doing things in your life, promoting things in your life that will promote more trust in God. One of the things that will oh, rob us from trust is this two opinions. And we've got we've to begin to work on that one. God wants to help us. And trust is something that God wants to bring back into the picture. The word trust just simply means to have confidence. That's why the writer of this article said, God might not always heal the person, but it's always his will for us to trust him that he can. And there's a big difference there, folks. That is not a cop-out. And so trust is something that God wants to return to every individual here. He wants you to begin to trust in the Lord. Praise God. In fact, the scripture points out that we need to learn how to trust in the Lord with all of our heart. Would you like to stand tonight and pray a prayer of that? I'm pointing out a need here. And everyone in this place has that need, in, 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 including me. We need to be able to trust in God more. Are you willing to take that kind of a journey? Let God bring trials into your life that will, that will promote that? I'm not talking about taking away all of your problems. I'm talking about for the first time maybe beginning to realize that Jesus is in those problems with you. And you can learn to have that peace. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost already ministering in Jesus' name. I'm telling you, folks, that's what God wants to do. He didn't promise us that we would not have any problems. In fact, he was very direct when he said, in the world, you're going to have tribulation. He said that. He said that to his disciples. But he wants you to understand that even in the midst of that trial, you can have peace. You can have that peace of God that goes beyond that understanding. And I'll tell you something, a byproduct of that peace is going to be trust. You can begin to trust him no matter what. And I'm telling you, that's another one of those mind shifts. That will affect the world you're around. That will do something for people that come your way. I'm telling you something. You talk about a witness, people that have the peace and the trust of God while they're going through something they can't understand. I'm telling you something. There is something powerful about that. And God is called thus. He said, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost come upon you, and you shall be witnesses. The word witness there in the eighth verse of the first chapter of Acts means to be a martyr. It means to be willing to die out in the name of Jesus. That directly affects me in my mind, in my thinking. i got to die out to my way of thinking, and I've got to begin to adapt his way in the name of Jesus. Come on, I'm telling you, the peace of God and the trust of God is available to you here tonight night in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus praise God praise God oh I tell you right now I feel like somebody's opening up their heart right now for that to happen in the name of Jesus oh oh hallelujah hallelujah mm. in the name of Jesus that's it that's so sweet that's so sweet. I feel it again over in that ear. There is something happening here. Somebody's taking a long drink out of the well of salvation right now. Somebody's taking a long, cool drink out of that well in the name of Jesus. Doesn't that taste good? Doesn't that feel right? Doesn't that sense right now that you're in the right place, that God's in charge? He really is. Come on, you don't have to fear life like that anymore. You don't have to develop some things in your life that are safeguards and start 
heart and start pushing things away that God has intended to come your way. Come on, in the name of Jesus. That's right, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, that's it. Oh, hallelujah. Understanding into this place, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let's give God some praise. Can we do that? Hallelujah. Praise God. You can be seated. Praise God. See, folks, the services are different on Sunday night. Isn't that something? I mean, they're just completely different. And the reason that is is because there's a little more room for ministry here, mainly on Sunday morning, and God changes that from time to time. It's mainly declaring and teaching because that's why the people come. But on Sunday night, for some reason, there's room for ministry, and there's been ministry in this place, tremendous ministry. Now, I want you to know right up front here, and I'm only going to take about another 10 minutes so you can relax, maybe. <laughs> but um, I just got to give somebody hope. But I am not a psychologist. I will never, ever claim to be one. But I will tell you what I have done and what psychologists have kind of provoked me to do a little bit, and that is to study human behavior. And one of the reasons I do it is not to figure you out. <laughs> That's too big of a job. <laughs> no. no. The reason I do it, and I hope this doesn't sound self-serving, but I want to figure me out because I'm a human being. And I understand that most human beings are prone to certain behaviors. Now, what I'm going to do here for this portion of the service is not intended to give you some kind of a complex. What it's really designed to do uh, which I feel like the Lord has told me he would do, is reveal some things. Reveal some things to you. And I'm not talking about the surface things. I'm not talking about the cuts and the, um, um, and, and the uh, bleeding that you had in your, in your physical. I'm talking about something much deeper. Now, there's five words I want to try to identify here tonight. And I believe that, uh, that God can help us with this in Jesus' name. One is suspicion. The other is worry. Another one is anxiety. And then uh, the fourth one is obsession. And the fifth one is phobia. And these are things that are real. I've seen them in my own life. I've watched God in my life, just even in the last couple of years, strip off some veneer and take some of that away from me and help me in these areas. And believe me, it's taken quite a relationship and it takes a lot of trust. You gotta trust in the Lord. And this is what God wants to do. Because you must understand something here tonight. And again, I am not a psychologist. I just study human behavior. And suspicion is real. You know what suspicion is? Suspicion is having or showing a cautious distrust of someone or something. That's what suspicion is. And all of us have it. And some of it is good. There's some things in some places you go that you, your suspicion needs to come right to the surface because there's some things going on that you don't want to take part of. You might go to somebody's house, and before, you know, it was no big deal. You partied with them and all that kind of business, but all of a sudden you go in there and you go, whoa, that happened to me. I told you a little bit of my story, you know. Um, uh, I quit drinking, but I, uh, all my friends were drinkers, and so what I did was I just I had a little plan, and I said I'm going to start drinking near beer. No alcohol. And my goodness, I went into those places that I used to go, and oh, suspicion was running over. There's something going on here that I distrust. And that was a good one. But what I'm talking about here tonight is a suspicion about the things of God. And that's why I understand when you talk about the physical or the flesh versus the spirit, that can happen. That's why one of the things I taught our discipleship class here this afternoon, and hopefully it helped, was for them to recognize the difference between the flesh 
and the Spirit. And one thing that we found out that the Scripture tells us is that the flesh is against the Spirit and the Spirit is against the flesh. Plain and simple. So you're going to have suspicions against the spiritual things of God that you must overcome. Because if suspicion isn't dealt with, and it's dealt with with trust, faith in the things of God, it'll develop into worry. And let me give you the meaning of worry. Worry is just concerned, anxious, troubled, or uneasy. You know, sometimes we go into spiritual situations when God is doing something, and our fleshly suspicions come in, and pretty soon we get real easy, uneasy about that. Well, you've got to take care of that. You've got to deal with that. You've got to begin to trust the Lord with all of your heart. Now, I didn't lie to you, and I didn't say that this was going to be an easy journey, but it's going to be a very, very well worth journey in Jesus' name. Because if suspicion and worry are not dealt with, praise God, what's going to happen after that is you're going to begin to develop anxiety. Now, this is progression. This will happen, and it will accelerate itself. And anxiety is a feeling of worry, nervousness, or uneasiness. It begins to affect the way you receive things. That's why at a Bible study, a lot of times, I try to put people at ease. Because if they're not, they're not going to receive anything. You can teach one of the greatest Bible studies in the world, but a lot of that stuff will just go right over their head because they're nervous. And these things are real. That's why eventually the things of God have got to become, you've got to become confident in them. Because if you stay in these states, you're not going to get anything. And i got a feeling I'm talking to somebody right now that this has been a real concern for you. And God wants to help you. Because if anxiety is not dealt with, it's going to produce obsession. And obsession is an idea or thought that continually this is something that begins to continually preoccupy your thinking. And boy, I mean to tell you, this can be tough. And I mean, God doesn't want it to get that far, but I got a feeling there's somebody in here it has. Because after obsession, there's something called phobia. And phobia is just simply this, a persistent irritation of fear of a specific object and a specific thing or activity. And all of you have known people that have been in that state. They won't come to church. They won't pray. They won't seek the things of God because there's a constant irritation. Well, I'm here to tell you, praise God, all of that is under the blood of Jesus Christ and can be healed. Now, I don't know if there's anybody in this house that is brave enough to ask for that kind of prayer. But I'm going to tell you right now, it's available for you. Now, I'm not going to say if you come down here that you've got all of these things. But all I'm saying is if you come down here, you recognize there's something in your life that doesn't belong there. And the blood of Jesus Christ is for you tonight to be completely healed. God doesn't want you to be nervous about this. He doesn't want you to have a continual thought of, I wonder what's going on. He wants you to be completely relaxed. He wants you to be completely confident. This is when the deep things of God can begin to happen in Jesus' name. I am not going to play any music tonight. I am going to do this because of the instruction of the Lord. I am going to anoint these people in the name of Jesus. And I'm going to believe God for the prayer of faith. Mm, in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. Now, I want you to do something. When I pray for you, and after I get done praying for you, I want you to go back and return to your seat and continue praying, okay? I want you to do that because I want to make sure that I hit every person here. In Jesus' man, I feel, oh, my goodness. No, no. 
Jesus, come down your name. Oh, hallelujah. I'm telling you, in a few, it's instantaneously. But all of you, I can tell you right now, the healing has begun. It has begun in the name of Jesus. That's right. You can have confidence in that. You can say, this was not some ritual that I did. This was the biblical mandate. You told me, God, to ask the elders of the church and to have them pray over me, anointing me with oil. I'm telling you, folks, that's a good place to begin. That's called obedience. That's called having confidence in his word. In the name of Jesus, that's it. I'm telling you right now, Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah is in the house. Oh, blessed be to the name of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. That one needs to be interpreted.
come on, that's not it. I mean, it is it, but that's not all. Now, that one doesn't need to be interpreted. That's intercession. God is interceding for somebody in here right now. That's right. This is the spirit, folks. You feel that yearning in your heart right now? Yeah, you can go ahead and join right in. It doesn't matter. Come on, that's for somebody. That's ministry. Ooh, that is travail. Utaha, Yanaku. Oh, yes. Mok, Uyana Moko, Shataha Yanabakiatsa. Oh, Jesus. Yes, Lord God. That's it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your concern, Lord. Thank you for your burden that is beyond any of us right now. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. I know that's a little strange to a couple of you, but that's travail. That's what that is. That's the spirit of travail. Praise God. God wants to birth something in. We've got several here that need the Holy Ghost. That could be one reason. It could be that somebody's maybe prepared to walk away. I don't know. It doesn't matter to me. But I'm here to tell you, God is interceding for you right now. You can understand that his concern goes beyond the physical aspect, that in the spirit right now, he is interceding. He's reaching forth into you right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, Jesus. That's it. That's it. He needed help. That's it. Just go ahead and let that out. Again, that doesn't need to be interpreted. That's what that is. Come on, do you feel that concern? Do you feel that intensity? Oh, Jesus. Oh, man, that's deep. Boy, I'm telling you, God is going to the depths. Oh, yes. Oh, Jesus. 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 That's it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. 
In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. Now, I'll tell you something right now, folks. I'll tell you something right now. On a few of you, there was some suspicion that came up. I'm going to tell you what that was. That was your flesh. But your spirit could agree with that. There was no problem with your spirit about that in Jesus' name. And so right there, you saw the difference. The flesh don't like that. The flesh don't like the operation of the spirit. Never will. And that's why I'm not here to to, to you know, to appease the flesh. I'm here to say, hey, the spirit man, that's the thing that God is reaching for right now. In Jesus' name. Let's lift our hands once again. Let's just ask the Lord to help us. Oh, what a, what a tremendous God we serve. Oh, Jesus. Oh, that's it. That's it. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Genuine concern, Lord God. And what's happening? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, it's still very prevalent in this place. It's still very, very prevalent. God is doing something. Come on, he's taking it to the depth. He's taking it to the area that it needs to be right now. Bible says, who can know the things of God but the Spirit of God? But yea, he reveals them unto us. Come on, that's what he's doing right now. He's revealing things to us. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. That's it. That's it. Mm. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hmm. Oh, Matoho Ribadia Kohosha. Yes, Jesus. Oh, this would be an excellent time if you have not prayed in the Spirit for a while. If you've not spoken in tongues and prayed in tongues, this would be an excellent time to do it. I'm telling you, it should be very easy for you. It should literally just flow out of you right now because the Spirit is moving in this place right now. The Spirit is moving. That's it. Come on, don't let your flesh resist it any longer. Just let the Spirit that's in you just come out, just like, just like Jeff or Jerry did in the prayer room. He just let it come out. He just let it flow out of him. That's what we can do right now. Come on, that's it, that's it. Many of you are in it right now. In the name of Jesus, that's of God. That's of God. This isn't meant to scare you, by the way. It's meant to give you confidence. It's meant to give you more faith. It's meant to give you more trust in the Lord. I'm telling you, this is not something that is physical. This is something that's spiritual. The Bible says our God is spirit, and that's why we must get comfortable with the spiritual things in the name of Jesus. That's it, that's it. Oh, just tons of ministry in this place. In the name of Jesus. That's it. That's it. Come on, let's just take another minute or so. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. That's it. That's it. It should flow out of you very easily. It shouldn't be some cramped up feeling. It shouldn't be some nervousness that what people are going to think. Come on, that kind of stuff should be under the blood. We've already renounced that. We already said we don't want that kind of a life. We want to have confidence in the Lord, in the name of Jesus. That's what this is all about. That's what this service is really doing, is it's giving us more confidence in the spirit. Come on, that's what this is for, in the name of Jesus. That's it. That's it. Let it just flow. Come on, for another minute or so, in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, my goodness. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, yes, that's it, that's it. Ha, Come on, that's it. Come on, just let that come out. In the name of Jesus, that's it. You could even shout right now. You could even just yell unto the Lord. In the name of Jesus. That's right, I'm not ashamed of the spiritual things of God. I'm not ashamed. Oh, shalemo, koyalemoka, yelamandoro. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, my goodness, yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. That's it, that's it, that's it. Oh, my goodness. 
Oh, hallelujah. Come on, that's right. Come on, God. Come on, God interceded for you. He reached down real deep for you. That was for you. Yes, Oh, that's it. Yes, Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh, yes. Praise the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Flow. That's what God is trying to get us to get to the place where we're confident and, and we have trust in that. The flow of God. Does that mean that this has to happen every time we come together? No, it just means that it could. And let me just say something here before we, we conclude this tonight. It's just like the distinction of those voices that you heard in, in the Spirit. There is. There's distinctions. One of the gifts of the Spirit is something called diverse tongues, which means you can have a, a prayer language that you pray with, and that's okay. You need, as an individual, develop that. Oh, yes. And then there's a spirit of travail that you can feel. It comes from the depth. It's much like a baby being born in Jesus' name. That's what's happening, praise God. And then there was a tongue, praise God, that needed to be interpreted. God wanted to say something in here. In Jesus' name. And we must, be, we must become very, very proficient, if I can put it that way, in that kind of an operation that's called the operation of the Spirit of God in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And so the level of confidence, praise God. But one last thing I want to do for you here tonight, and I'm going to be getting to teach this probably more and more, is that there's got to be something that goes even beyond our physical emotions. Emotion is the lowest octane that you can get. One of the highest octanes is when you can begin to do this basically by faith. I will praise him by faith. I will speak in that heavenly language by faith. And not think that there has to be some emotional charge behind it all the time. I got a feeling this is one that's kept a few of you shallow. Because I'll guarantee you there's a lot of times my emotions don't feel like doing this. And that's why when my emotions are, 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 are struggling with my flesh issues, I can still in the spirit go into the faith realm and do it the way God wants me to do it. Now, I don't expect you to get all the understanding to that, but consider these things. And the Lord give you understanding in Jesus' name. Why don't you grab somebody's hand right now and let's pray for one another before we dismiss here tonight. In Jesus' name, pray for your brother and sister. Ask the Lord to be a blessing in their life. Ask God to give them great understanding to what's going on in the kingdom of God. Help them to be overcomers. Help them, Lord God, to get rid of the fear and the anxiety and the panics that come from the things of the Spirit in Jesus' name. That's it. That's it. Bless your people. Anoint them, Lord God, greatly in Jesus' name. And I thank you for them, Lord God. I appreciate a congregation of apostolics. I appreciate this church. I thank you for people in this area that will take a stand for you, God. 
I expect great things to happen, Lord God, as they continually are. I believe your prayer meetings are going are gonna to just erupt in people's homes. You're going to take this thing to the street. You're going to give people boldness, Lord God, to do your work anywhere, anytime. Amen. In the name of Jesus, that's it. That's it. For those that, were, that don't understand this, give them understanding in the name of Jesus. Give them understanding of the things of God. I praise you, Lord God. I thank you for your goodness and your mercy. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. What do you say together? We give God one more praise. Praise God. Wednesday night, we'll continue with the Bible study. We'll talk about values on Wednesday night. So if you can be here, you come. Also, our children's ministry is in the, in, just in the, uh, uh, the time now, they're starting a fundraiser for the children's ministry. And this year, we have some good things that are planned. This church, we're going to be hosting a children's crusade in August. Yeah, there's going to be people that are going to be converging from part of the different parts of the country, and they're going, to, they're going to be coming here for a children's crusade. And we're beginning to believe God for an outpouring of the Holy Ghost, specifically, not only, but specifically for young people, children, in Jesus' name. So keep those in your prayers. I know they have a fundraiser going on right now, the vases with the flowers in them. See Sister Wanda if you want more details, and, and be a part of what's going on in this church in Jesus' name. God bless you, folks. The Lord bless you. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs>